well. The uh, two robotics operators will be using the robot arm to move the S6 element into position for its mating with the S5 element. The EV crew will get set up in position to monitor as the robotics operators bring the uh, S6 element into position. They'll make a couple of stops on the way at 30 centimeters and at 15 centimeters to check for final alignment before bringing it into place, checking that the alignment cones and the have come completely into the alignment cups and are ready for driving the attachment system bolts. The EV crew will actuate the um, capture claw that will hold the two elements together uh, during the time that they go around to each of the four corners and actuate the four attachment system bolts. Following that, they'll be moving on to mating the umbilicals. They have two power and two data umbilicals that need to be mated. Here you see uh, Steve Swanson in the neutral buoyancy laboratory during training mating one of the uh, data connections between the S5 element and the S6 element on the left. As he's working on that, EV2 is going around and uh, securing the grounding straps between the, the two elements, one on each of the four corners. And from there, he'll take a foot restraint out to the outboard end of the S6 element onto the integrated electronics assembly or IEA portion of the S6. He'll install the foot restraint and get set up to release the launch restraint bolts on the solar array blanket boxes. The uh, uh, blanket boxes are held in place by two launch restraints. The inboard, there are two bolts that hold those into position. Uh, here you can see them in the neutral buoyancy laboratory uh, using his power tool and torque multiplier to reach down between the two blanket boxes to release the high torque fasteners and then to rotate those inboard launch restraints out of the way. He'll then reposition his foot restraint to work on the outboard launch restraints. That launch restraint is a clamshell type of mechanism held in place by six high torque bolts. Uh, he'll use the torque multiplier and power tool again to release that uh, launch restraint and then um, uh, release the clamshell for stowage in the S6 stowage bin. Here we see uh, what EV1 Steve Swanson will be doing at the same time. He'll be working on releasing the cinch bolts. There are six of those that hold the photovoltaic radiator into position for launch. Uh, there are six of the cinch bolts and two winch bars that need to be removed and moved out of the way to enable the ground control team to command the deploy of that radiator, which will happen near the end of the EVA or possibly right after EVA-1. When EV-2 is finished with the launch restraint bolts on uh, one side of the integrated electronics assembly, he'll move to the other side um, and work on first the inboard launch restraints and then again the outboard launch restraints, again removing the clamshell from the outboard launch uh, restraints for the blanket boxes and positioning that for later stowage in the stow bin of the S6. When he's finished using his foot restraint, he'll move it out of the way so that the uh, blanket boxes can uh, be uh, deployed with the uh, mass canister on the solar array wing. EV1 will come over and rotate the keel pin assembly out of the way so that will leave a clear sweep envelope as uh, the solar array wings are deployed. Those solar array wings are held into place uh, for launch well, with two launch restraint bolts called the beta gimbal assembly launch restraint bolts. When those two bolts are released, it allows the linkage that holds the mass canister uh, called the four bar linkage because there are four bars linking it to the main portion of the S6. The uh, two beta gimbal restraint bolts will re be released and that mass canister can swing out and up or down into position so that the blanket boxes can then be deployed in preparation for solar array deploy that actually happens later in the mission, uh, most likely on flight day eight. Uh, when one of the mass canisters is in position, the beta gimbal restraints of the other mass canister will be released, allowing that four bar linkage to deploy and lock into position. When the uh, mass canisters and four bars are locked into position. The crew members can crawl up onto the top of the mass canisters 
and deploy the blanket boxes into their final position, first the right side and then the left side. When they've completed one of the uh, mass canister solar array blanket box uh, positionings, they'll move to the other one. And uh, they'll do a final verification that the uh, pit pins are in place to hold those, as well as the mechanism locking. Uh, restraint. What you see flashing right there are the SSU and ECUs of one of the mass canisters and here in the NBL you see them removing the thermal covers from those elements. As long as the ground control team has enough time and power to get the um, element activated, those thermal blankets will no longer be required and they can be removed uh, in preparation for deploy of the solar arrays. Should they not accomplish that task on this EVA, it can be picked up at the beginning of the second EVA. They have uh, one get-ahead task that they can get done at the end if they have time or really any time during the EVA uh, as long as we are on time or ahead of the nominal timeline. And that get-ahead task is to release the torque on the four fasteners of the MMOD shield or micrometeor debris shield that is on the IEA. That shield uh, is torqued down uh, with fairly high torque for launch and that torque needs to be released uh, to relieve loads on that element for the rest of the life of the station. That's the end of EVA-1 and uh, the crew members will gather up their tools, head back into the airlock uh, about the same time the um, radiator can be deployed. That again was a look at the activities that the two spacewalkers will be performing tomorrow on the first spacewalk of the mission.